So let's look at how to use Excel to uh, carry out a simple linear regression analysis and also calculate the correlation coefficient between the two variables. So here is some uh, very uh, generic data showing uh, two variables x and y. Now of course in practice these will relate to some specific variables where you're trying to find a relationship between them. x is of course the dependent, uh, the independent variable, and y is the dependent variable. In other words, we're looking to see whether changes in x cause changes in y. And if we can find a relationship between them, we can use that, then use that for forecasting. So let me first of all draw the scatter graph of these points. So highlighting them. Now you must make sure that uh, the x variable is on the left and the y is on the right when you draw the scatter graph in uh, Excel so it plots the variables on the correct axes. X of course goes on the horizontal and y on the vertical. So going to the insert menu and choosing to draw a scatter graph, just the points, here we have the scatter graph. Now of course you would need to tidy this up by putting a proper title in and labeling the axes according to the two variables. This of course is the x variable and the y variable. I won't do that here to save time. Notice that it does appear, there does appear to be an approximate linear relationship between these two variables. We could draw a straight line here which would be close to most of the points. What regression analysis does of course is find the best line, the line of best fit, the best fitting line between the, the points. Notice that it appears to be a negative relationship as x increases, y decreases, which means the slope of the line should of course be negative. Now of course, to find the straight line here we need to find two parameters. We need to find first of all where the line starts on the vertical axis, that's called the vertical intercept, which is normally given a in, in general is given a symbol a. So we need to know where the line starts, we then need to know the slope to put it at of course is the slope, the gradient of the line, which in general is called b. So if we find those two parameters, a and b, the intercept and the slope, then we know how to draw the line. Now to calculate these two parameters we need various summations. We need the sum of the x values, the sum of the y values, but we also need the sum of xy, x squared and y squared. So let me calculate these three missing columns to begin with, so x, y, x times y, so I'm going to multiply each x figure by the corresponding y figure, so let's do the first one there, a2 times b2. Now let me find x squared, so using the power operator here, and then let me find y squared. So those are the values of x times y, x squared and y squared for the first pair of values. And of course all I need to do now is to copy this formula down, the formulas that are in the cells, to do all the rest. Try to copy it properly. There we go. Okay, so those are my x, y values, x squared and y squared. Now I need the sums of all of these. So let me find the sums here using the sum function. Let's find the sum of the first column here, x and I'm going to make this bold and also let me put it in say uh, red just to remind so I can distinguish it from the actual data. Now I can simply drag across to copy the formula to find the sums of the other uh, four columns like that. So we now have our summations that we require. Now we need to calculate a and b, the intercept and the slope. Now you have to calculate the slope first, b, because that is then subsequently used in the formula for a. Now the formula for b is here. It's on the top, on the numerator we have n, which is the number of pairs of 
observations here, which is uh, eight. You'll see there are eight pairs of observations, pair, pairs of x and y. So it's eight times the sum of x, y minus the sum of x times the sum of y. And on the bottom we have n times the sum of x squared minus the sum of x all squared. So it's best not to try and put a formula in to do that whole thing in one go, in one cell. It's best to work out the numerator, then the denominator, and then finally b. So I'm going to put the formula for the numerator in here. So it's n, which is 8 here, times the sum of x, y values, minus the sum of the x values, times the sum of the y values. Uh, do I need any brackets here to make sure it works out correctly? Well, no, because remember the normal rules will be that the multiplication is done first before the subtraction. So that's going to be fine. So let me enter that. And I get minus 5, 8, 5, 6. Now let me do the denominator of the B formula, which is n times the sum of the x squared values minus the sum of the x values, which is squared. Again, no need for brackets because the squaring will be done first and then the multiplication and then the subtraction, which is what I want. So entering that, I get that. Now finally, therefore, I can calculate b very easily. b is therefore equal to this numerator of the formula divided by the denominator of the formula, which gives me my answer for b, the slope. It's negative, as expected. Now let me just reduce that down to two decimal places, which we'll do. So we have a slope of minus 1.97. In other words, every time x goes up by 1, y falls by 1.97 units. Now I can calculate a, the intercept. Now the formula for a is um, sigma y divided by n minus b, and this is why I needed to calculate b first, times sigma x divided by n. Again, no brackets required. The multiplications and divisions will be done first before the subtraction. So I don't need to override the normal rules here. That gives me my intercept of 95.95. So we have a line of best fit here uh, as an equation, y equals 95.95 minus 1.97x. Okay, now, so that's the relationship, that's the line of best fit, which we can use for um, forecasting, and I'll come to that shortly. How good will those forecasts be? Well, that depends on how close a fit this line is to the point. In other words, the degree of what we call correlation between y and x. It's clearly not a perfect fit. I couldn't, this line of best fit couldn't be drawn on here so that all the points were on it, but it, it's the best fitting one. But clearly they look as if they'd be fairly close to it, which means that there seems to be a high degree of correlation between y and x here. A negative correlation, of course, as x goes up, y falls. So we can actually measure that degree of correlation with the correlation coefficient, which can range from minus 1, which will be a perfect negative fit, to plus 1, a perfect positive fit. You're not going to get either of those, of course, but this looks as though it should be fairly close to minus 1. Let's see. Now the formula for um, R is this one. It looks even more complicated than uh, the one for B. Indeed it is, however it's not too difficult to calculate because it turns out that we've calculated two-thirds of it already. The numerator is the same as the numerator of b, so we've already got that here. And on the denominator, under the square root sign, we have on the left this, the denominator uh, of the b formula, and on the right 
we have a similar expression but for y rather than x. So that's the only one we need to calculate uh, before we can plug into the formula. So I'm going to do that here. So the other bit we need is n, which is 8, times sigma y squared, which is here, minus sigma y, which is squared. So notice it's essentially the same expression as we did here, but this involved x, whereas this is y. So if I calculate that, I get this answer. So now we have all the bits that we need for the for the correlation coefficient r. So let me calculate that. So r is equal to this value here, the, the denominator, same as denominator for b divided by the square root, so I'm going to use the square root function here, sqrt. So it's the square root of this times this. And that should give me my r, my correlation coefficient. we get minus 0.97 if I just put that down to two decimal places. Okay, which confirms what visually we could see here that it's clearly going to be negative. So if this didn't come out as negative, clearly you've made a mistake. And it looks as if it's going to be close to minus one because there's a fairly good fit here between the points. Now finally the other thing we can calculate is R squared, the coefficient of determination, which tells you what percentage of the variation in x, uh, in y rather, is accounted for by variation in x. So it's another way of looking at correlation. It's called R squared because that's literally what it is. It's the square of the R value. So let me calculate R squared here by simply finding the square of this. So it's equal to that squared, which is a rather large value. So let me, um, a lot of decimal places I should say, let me reduce that down to say about th three maybe in this case. Let me just change that column width back a little bit. Okay, so that's our squared. Now R squared, of course, can only range between 0 and 1 because whenever you square any uh, negative number or positive number, it's going to be positive. So it can range between 0 and 1. This is telling me that 93.9, essentially 94% of the variation in Y is accounted for by variation in X. So X is, a, is the major factor, the major variable determining changes in Y. There's only another 6% of variation, which is essentially being unexplained. Now, just one final thing. You can confirm your calculations uh, quite easily in uh, Excel because it turns out that this um, procedure, calculating the line of best fit and the correlation coefficient and R squared, is so standard that it's all built into Excel itself. Here we've gone through the thing manually so that you can understand the calculations, but you could in fact simply add this trend line, this linear relationship onto your graph directly and R squared by simply, if we go to the um, chart here and uh, have a look at chart design, um, under the add chart element, you can add a linear trend line so it actually puts the line of best fit on and we can check our calculations by if I return to this and go to more trend line options I can then display the equation on the chart and as you can see it's exactly the same as I calculated you can also display the R squared which again confirms my calculations let me just 
move this a little bit here and increase the font size so you can see it much better okay so now we can see that this confirms our calculations r squared of 0 0.39 a slope of minus 1.97 and an intercept of 95.95 now, so that shows you how to calculate the uh, regression line and the correlation coefficient in R squared in Excel.